Jimmy Perrier from powerlifting.website, from website, your go-to resource for all beginning powerlifting, powerlifting information. And today I'm here to answer a question, which is basically, what is powerlifting, or what is a winner's powerlifting mentality? The article itself doesn't say winners, but it's winners, it's like a winner mentality. Um, obviously, I'm a, I'm a powerlifter, but again, I'm fairly new to the game. I only have a few years in it, so like I don't want to speak from my own personal experience. I want to go off of like actual people who know who um, have actually competed in the sport, which is not to say that I haven't done anything myself. I have a personal record of very proud of it. It's like, uh, I, for me, with a 500-plus pound deadlift, something comes for me with a 500-plus pound deadlift at a 150-pound body weight, it's much different than something coming from a dude, a dude like, like Eddie Hall who's 300-plus pounds and heavy deadlift legend. And I'm like, you know what I'm saying? Even though he's not a power lifter, he's still lifts heavy weights, does his thing, and makes that movement. So, yeah, that's, so this comes from other people's perspective, and after reading through some of the con- um, content that's been successful or winning power lifters, strong or whatever, um, have put out, I found three commonalities. Um, and these commonalities are, let me back up. <laughs> I'm about to get into what I'm going to say. So, basically, they have, they, they work very hard, obviously, when they're getting into their craft. The powerlifting, all, when we look at all these successful powerlifters, all we see, like when on YouTube or whatever, like we see these people lifting the heavy weights. We see them smiling, joking around with their friends, doing this, that, and the other, right? But we don't see them behind, like when they're struggling. We don't see them uh, missing weights. We don't see them doing, well, sometimes, some people are very honest, but we don't see some people not hitting their weights or like they're struggling and all the pain that they're dealing with. It's very painful to lift two times, two to three times your body weight. It's not an easy thing to do. It's just not like, it's not how it goes. So we have to understand that they are they're dealing with a lot of pain and to deal with that pain they have to be committed. They understand that they want something, so they're willing to deal with whatever it takes to get to that something. Um now I'm not saying that they're not willing to quit basically. They're committed. They're willing to deal with it. They put through they put up with it and they go through the motions. They go they ride that wave all the way out. Um until they hit their weight goal or to, until they do whatever they say they want to do. That's how that works. They don't quit. So they work hard and committed. Those two going hand in hand. They're committed because they don't quit and they work hard, obviously, because they're dealing with a lot and they're doing a lot of reps and they're obviously doing things outside of whatever they're doing. So they're doing their workouts and they're doing work and they have family life and everything. So they're working hard. A lot of people work hard, but these people work hard. <laughs> I was like, yeah. And then they understand the process. What do I mean by this? Um, They understand that... They're not going to hit a 600, you're not going to go from, a, as an experienced pilot, you're not going to go from a 600 pound deadlift to a 800 pound deadlift in a year. Unless you just suck, your, your, your form was terrible and you just weren't doing everything you could. You're not going to do that. So they understand that it's going to take a small incremental changes and in jumps to get to their weight goal. So if they want to get to 800 pounds, it's probably going to take them like two, three years. It's going to take, or four years. It could take whatever long. They understand that it's a process. So they're not willing to quit. That goes into commitment. They understand that they're going to have to deal with whatever it has to deal with and change whatever they have to change and tweak whatever they have to tweak to get to where they want to go. They understand it's small jumps, not huge jumps. You're not going to go from 600 to 800 pounds. That's way too huge. That's way too much of a, a change. That's like not. That's not natural. I'm not saying it's natural to lift a thousand pounds, but it's not natural to make a change like that. It's you don't make changes like that unless there's something completely wrong. And that is to say, if you are doing, if you are able to hit an 800 pound deadlift after only being able to deadlift 600, that means there is something wrong. So you have to make that change. Um, that's how I think, and that's really, and I think that I can, that can actually be applied to a lot of things. But that's besides the point. <laughs> um, they know how to focus. If you've ever seen. A, if you've ever looked at the face of someone who's a who's a successful powerlifter, someone who like works hard in the gym, bodybuilder, weightlifter, whatever, and they're about to hit a heavy weight, you're gonna see that their eyes like it's there's a certain way that a, a look about them that they're not joking. Like they know this weight is serious. They know that's the only thing on their mind at that moment. They look like okay, well I'm about to kill this thing. Like this is what I have to do. 
This is my way. They're not thinking about you. They're not talking. They might even say, they might say one thing, but to you, if you ask them a question, but after that, they're all, all their focus is on that weight because they know what they have to do. They they know how to focus. Same thing at a meet. When you're at a meet, they know they're paying attention to whatever. Like they're not paying attention to other people around. They have headphones in. They're doing their thing, and they're they're just waiting to get, go up. Like it's all about paying attention. I'm at McDonald's by the way, <laughs> as you can tell. You can see the little M in the corner. But yeah, they they're not worried about anything else. They they know they're focused on what they have to do in the near future. Nothing else. Nothing in the past. Nothing in the, the far out in the future. They just focused on that here and now, or there and then, or whatever the fuck. Sorry for cursing. <laughs> Not really. Uh, then they have metaphorical balls. There's two things that's going to go into this. And they're pulling in right next to it. I paused that for a second. But they have metaphorical balls. Meaning they know. I mean, obviously I'm not saying they have actual you know, things in between their legs. To look, uh, what are they? Ovals? That was, I'm sorry. That's besides the point. But they, not to say that they're. Uh, basically, that's to say that they're willing to take. They're willing to accept the risk that it comes with, with lifting that heavy weight. They know they can hurt themselves. You know they can pe you could tear a peck, you could rip your shoulder by lifting or mess your shoulder about uh lifting um two to three times your body weight overhead. You make your six hundred pounds at a two hundred pound body weight. Like that's I don't know who've done that before, but you get what I'm saying? That's like very risky. You can hurt yourself. That's more than a natural human supposed to lift. So they understand that and they're willing to take that risk. Um there's no shortage of heart. You would think that this is the same as what I said previously, but it's not. Um they're willing to put themselves in very compromising positions. It's not the same thing as having balls. They're willing to put themselves in compromising positions and go through with it. You get what I'm saying? Like, it's not about accepting a the risk. They just... You got to understand that it's courage. Like, you, if you're putting two to three times or four times your body weight on your back, you got to know that you can hurt yourself. You know what's going on, but it's just... You say, okay, I'm going to do this because it's what I want. That's all that is. You got you got the heart to deal with, deal with whatever is coming with you. Willing to accept those risks. Same thing is kind of his gut, but it's a little bit different. Um, then they take responsibility for their actions. They understand that there's a law of equivalent exchange, kind of. I believe that's a law. Um, there's no deals. You can't get nut something for nothing. Not really. People say that, but there's all, any, nothing. You can't get you, nothing comes from nothing. So whatever you give in, put in is what you'll get out. If you put in, if you want to deadlift a thousand pounds at a two hundred pound body weight, like think Chris Duffin did, that he was like two twenty five or two fifty. I don't know. He was very. Uh, he was about mid range. If you want to do like some crazy stuff like that, he deadlifted a thousand and one pounds. If you want to do something like that, you got to know that you got to be focused. You got to be willing to give it everything you got to do that. That's how that goes. Like it's not. It's not some, oh, I go to the gym twice a week or two times a month and I'm going to be able to do that because it comes easy. If you want to make a billion dollars, I haven't made my billion yet, but you, if you want to make a billion dollars, and you got to be willing, you basically giving your whole life away. Are you willing to do that? If you want to build a business, make a million dollars or a hundred thousand dollars, you got to be willing to give what you, what it's going to take to get that because it's the law of equivalent, equivalent exchange. Nothing is free. And that's pretty much it. The one thing that all of these things have in common is that they basically say you have to really want whatever you say you want. Nothing comes easy and nothing is free. So that's how that works. All right, peace. Wait, wait, not done, not done. Also, I'll be shooting more videos like this in the um, near future. So if you like to see more, like and subscribe to the channel and don't forget to give this a thumbs up. And oh, and the link to the article will be in the description so you can get a full understanding of what I'm talking about. I'll also, I'm also thinking about doing like um, audios, like just so you can listen to this in the car. I'm gonna put it on audio, so make it easier on you guys. I know I don't like to, I can't watch. It's very dangerous to watch a video while you're driving. So yeah, just doing that. And I also have a book coming out. It's gonna be free. It's gonna be basically um, be a a full book on. Everything you may need to know, everything you need to know to be a beginning powerlifter. Everything that I wish I had known when I first started out, and just gonna put it out to you guys. For I think it's gonna be free. I don't know if it is costing things. It's gonna probably be like a dollar or two. Nothing uh, expensive. And I'm gonna also gonna put that in audio form for you guys to make it easier. Um, all right, yeah. You see me at the next one. Peace.